Hi there, and welcome to the Project Distilled YouTube channel where we talk about all things project management. I am glad that you're here. In this video, we are going to talk about portfolio management. Portfolio management is an extension of project and program management. Project and program management are the engines that drive execution in an organization. Project and program management is all about doing projects the right way. The governance that's set up, the reporting, all of those things that create a best practices atmosphere to get that work done. Portfolio management, on the other hand, is all about doing the right projects. I'm sure that you've been in an organizations where there have been more projects than there are people and resources to do them. I like to use the analogy that organizations love to try to stuff 20 pounds of projects into a 10 pound project sack. Portfolio management is the tool that helps us to cut out those extra 10 pounds of projects so that we have the right size, right number, and right projects that we are executing on. So how do you make those decisions about what projects make it into the sack and what projects don't? I'm gonna give you two tools to use to help you decide which projects should be executed on and which should be left for a future date if done at all. So look at this diagram. It's a typical diagram of what a project funnel looks like. All the way on the left, you can see the ideation phase. This is where project ideas come from. They can be good ideas, they can be bad ideas, but this is where people just say, hey, we need to get something done, let's create a project. All of those projects are collected and they move into the strategic screening phase. And that is the first screen that I think all good portfolio managers should use is how closely does a project align to the company's overall mission and vision and strategy. Your company may use something like OKRs, your company may use strategic objectives, strategic imperatives, whatever it is, but hopefully there is some kind of a list of this is what the company needs to do this year that is prioritized in such a way that you are able to use it as a screening tool. If you don't have that, that's kind of a problem. You'll have to use your best judgment. But using the company's most important goals for the year or whatever the time period is, you can then create a screen. What does the screen look like? Sometimes the screen looks just like this. A list of the company's most important goals and objectives for the year and a simple checkbox as to whether that project helps the company move that forward. You can do a simple count. A project that hits across all of those needs to be included and make it through the screen. A, a project that does not include any of those should not be considered. There's no strategic value or importance to that project. What about those that are in the middle? That's where you have to use your best judgment. If somebody submits a project that hits half of those, maybe that goes through, maybe it doesn't. Some of that depends on the volume of projects that you've received, but that's a good, quick, easy way to do a strategic screening. Another way to strategically screen is to actually put the list of projects in front of the most senior leadership you can get a hold of in an organization and have them choose which ones are most strategically important to the company. These have to be people that are not biased toward doing projects, say from IT. Uh, if an IT leader is always going to value doing IT projects a little bit more than they should. It needs to be somebody who's looking at it neutrally, and that's why it needs to be somebody who's at the very highest levels, maybe a CFO, something like that within an organization and can help you do that screen. Doing a strategic screen should take all of those wild ideas and narrow that down to a much more manageable list. And when you get that much more manageable list, you're ready for the next screen. The next screen is a financial screen. Now, if a project has made it this far so that you're doing a financial screen, that means that it's highly aligned, but not every aligned project can or should be done. Here's why. What if one of those projects has a cost of $5 million to execute and the expected value from that project is only $2 million. Well, you're throwing away $3 million, even though it's strategically aligned, that's not a project you should do. Since organizations have such limited resources, you should only go after projects that have a strong likelihood of delivering increased value at the end of them. There are many tools that you can use to evaluate whether a project can deliver that value. My preferred tool and a tool that is used a lot is net present value. And we're going to talk about net present value in more depth in just a second. But the other screens that you can use are internal rate of return 
And if you want something really simple, it's just number of years to get your payback on the project. The fewer the years, the better that is for financial return and financial success. That's a pretty naive way to look at projects though. It's just one factor. I recommend NPV and let's talk about why. Net present value is powerful. I even asked GPT-4, which is the latest and greatest artificial engine, artificial intelligence engine out there, what is the best tool for screening projects in a project portfolio? And it came back with net present value as the number one tool to use. And a little theory behind it so that you can understand it better. Net present value returns an actual dollar amount. So you, when you, let's say you have five projects and you run NPVs on them, there's going to be cash dollar amounts that come out of it. And whatever gives the highest actual dollar amount or whatever currency you use is going to be the project that you should do first. Versus internal rate of return, which you, gives you a percentage. It tells you how much um, return that you can expect. That's, that's fine, that's good, that can be used, um, but it doesn't give you kind of the relative terms of, hey, this project is, is $100,000, this one is 10 million. Um, internal rate of return doesn't care what size the project is, it just looks at the returns, whereas NPV gives you the actual cash return, and so that's a little bit more powerful. Payback period, it just means the time it takes for a project to, to cover its initial investment. Uh, so if it costs a million dollars, how long does it take for you to get back that million dollars in value? That's not an especially great tool, but it's a, it's a helpful measure and a lot of executives do look at that. I created this spreadsheet in Google Sheets. I figure everyone has access to Google Sheets and can do something similar if they so desire. We are going to use the example of a new office opening. Uh, I love this example uh, because it brings into play so many different things. It brings in IT, it brings in finance as they set up um, the actual entities, it brings in legal, it brings in physical facilities, some things can be capitalized. There's just so many variables with new office opening, I think it makes a great example. Let me orient you to the sheet now a little bit. A hurdle rate is the minimum return on investment that an organization expects. For example, if an organization has a million dollars to invest, they're not gonna invest in any, anything that is below a certain expected return. That's the hurdle rate. All investments must reach that hurdle rate for them to be considered. Here I'm using 11% because that is an actual number that I had uh, received from finance and accounting at a prior organization that I worked with. They would not invest in anything that didn't return at least 11% investment. Net present value looks at cash flows. Here I've developed six of them and you're going to see that of these six, two of them are negative, so that means that that's the cash outflow, and that's the total on that is about 2.25 million, and there's also cash inflow, so this is the expected return over a three-year period, and that is right at $3 million. So you can see right away that you invest 2.25 million, you get 3 million back, so therefore it must be a great investment, right? Well, yeah, it, it, NPV is showing positive at 220,000, but the reason why that 220,000 isn't 750,000, which is the difference between the positives and the negatives, is because you've got that hurdle rate built in. If this NPV sat at zero, that would mean that it was just meeting that hurdle rate of 11%. But we're going beyond that. In fact, if we look at internal rate of return, it's showing about 12% return. So. Given these numbers, this would be a good return. NPV takes into account the time value of money, meaning that this million dollars is worth less than this million dollars, given that a dollar today is worth it more than a dollar tomorrow. There's a time value to money and NPV takes that into account. IRR does not. Let me show you that right now. So you can see in the very formula for NPV, the very first variable in here is the discount rate or that hurdle rate. Okay, so that's the first variable. The next variable is the cash flow amount, and that's these. And then you'll see that the cash flow dates are the next ones, and that's these. So it takes into account those cash flow dates. Versus IRR just looks at B7 through B12 doesn't look at dates. So this number is a little bit dumber. That means that if we were to move around these numbers some, in fact, let's take this last million dollars and let's say that that is um, 1231 of 2030, so way out there. Look at what happened. 
still the same amount of money, it's still the $3 million, NPV went negative because that million dollars so many years out is worth so much less. But IRR stays exactly the same. Now payback, there's no formula in there. I just put that in, so that's not relevant for this. The payback wouldn't be for seven or eight years, and so that doesn't work. So I'm just showing you the, the power of NPV versus IRR. It takes into account that time value money. Okay, so going back to our example, we're gonna back out these changes. So let's do one more change here that may be of some significance. Let's play around with these numbers just a little bit. Let's say that um, our initial deposit is $500,000. So look at that, even though we're at two and a half million here and still at three million here, the NPV has gone negative. IRR is still positive at 7%. Um, but that doesn't meet the hurdle rate, therefore we should not do the project. So you can see how sensitive NPV can be. Let's go ahead and let's make this number bigger. So we're going up by 250,000 here, and look at the difference that this makes. That jumped up by almost that same $250,000, and the IRR is so much more with that. So getting these numbers right on the cash flow, and these are going to be estimates, so you're going to have to put your, your stick your finger into the wind and see what you, you think those numbers are, but do the best that you can. And the dates that you're going to receive those return matter a lot. So this project, NPV is telling us we should do that. Now what happens is you do this NPV analysis for this project and for any other projects that have passed that strategic hurdle, and you can develop a list showing hey, look at the NPV for this, look at the NPV for that. These are all projects that are worth investing in, um, and that becomes really powerful. So hopefully you found this video to be helpful, that <clears throat> doing NPV is not as hard as it looks. You have to assign values, it does take some research. Put a second set of eyes on it. This is something that ChatGPT could potentially help you with to determine whether you're looking at all the right variables. But doing NPV, will help you determine what project rises above the rest and is a, is a fantastic financial screen. So once you've got the list of strategically screened projects that has been narrowed by the financial screens, you can do a stack ranked list of projects that you should be doing. Those that are most highly strategically and financially viable, that those should be at the top. And then you just start to put your organization's resources in it can we do project one? Yes. Two, yes. And you go down the list. And as soon as you run out of money or people, that's where you draw the line. And you say, this is the list that we're going to take on this year. The, anything above the line is in my portfolio. And we are now going to manage the heck out of it so that we can deliver and execute on those programs. Portfolio management, hugely valuable to an organization. If you've not yet done it, I recommend you start to turn your career so that you can do it. It is a really fun exercise, very stressful, but really fun. And it helps you to really deliver value to an organization. So if you're craving delivering more value to the organization that you're with, portfolio management may be your ticket. If you enjoyed this video and found it valuable, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.